Uh, welcome back to the Career Build Series. This is episode 97. And so uh, last episode started doing a little bit of improvement on the KDDID and the barge to kind of integrate them together so I can use it as a landing platform. Uh, we have this new base here and um, so there's no place to spawn it. So by doing it this way, I can spawn the KDDID um, on top of the barge and so and actually use it as a helipad. So um, when I left off, this is kind of the system I had. So I want to redo this. Um, you know, these are on pivots and they flap up. The issue is it can also go uh, too far backwards. So uh, what I want to do is I just want to kind of, um, this is a good proof of concept. We have the alignment um, cross in uh, all set up in there. And so now what I can do is I can go back in here and kind of improve the system. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with some pink blocks just for marking. I'm going to usually use pink blocks if I need to delete something. So it's actually right here. So that's going to tell me right where I need to be. And so right here is the um, connection point or where it needs to be. So um, I need, I would say, minimum two up. Let's go three. And so when you have some physics problems, when you have glitching in a lot of these games, one of the reasons you have that is you're trying to, you're, uh, trying to connect two immovable objects. And so when you have two immovable objects trying to connect, you start getting strange phantom physics because, you know, again, they're supposed to be immovable and you're trying to move them. And so by doing it this way, what we're going to do is we're going to have a movable connector point. So we're not going to have two immovable items. We're going to have theoretically somewhat of an immovable item because this wheel does not compress. And then we're going to have a movable connector here. And that um, helps to eliminate some of these issues. So we need to go at least three down. So let's keep that in mind. And then I'm going to delete a block. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to kind of change the way I do this system. And so I'm going to start here by taking these, um, taking some connectors. I'm going to put them in here. Um, and I'm just going to cut them both. Actually, you know what I'll do here? Let's do this. Let's delete between the two. And let's go like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them and I'm going to connect them together like this. I'm going to cut, I'm going to paste them, and then I'm going to merge them. They are, are they all one already? They're one already. Okay, so see they're the same color. And now what I can do is I can delete these intermediary blocks here. And then I'm going to fill them like this and I can paint. And now as you can see, they're two separate um, colors. So they're two separate um, groups. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this... Um, Go ahead and paint this my pat yellow. Okay, so now these are going to go up and down, um, and that's going to allow us to um, get that movement. So instead of having two movable objects, we actually have, you know, at least one movable object, and that's going to make it so that we can uh, not run into any collision problems. Okay, so as you can see, these are going to move. So we have our uh, tank inside here. This is our. Um, did I? Inadvertently, I inadvertently painted everything in here, which I did not intend to do, um, but it's not a big deal. So we're going to put them in here, and we're going to actually take a little bit of our uh, fuel area here, um, which isn't the end of the world. Let me see if I can paint this back to white and not have an issue. Um, okay, looks like it's letting me do it without having too much of an issue. Let me do this. I don't like having this all a color. I kind of try to keep this stuff a little bit... Um, try to keep the interior... A, kind of a solitary color so that it makes it just a little bit easier to do stuff and not um, it's kind of a little bit pedantic but you can you know it makes it um, makes it easier for me so that's just what I want to do so I'm gonna go like that okay so that's better so um, these are gonna slide up and down and that's gonna allow it to not have issues with um, physics so that's one block that's two blocks that there is gonna be three blocks um, so then what we're going to do is we're going to put on some uh, tracks. All right. So we're going to start putting some tracks here. And if you set the strength to zero, that's going to let these move freely. And so we're going to take the final track segment is going to be this here, which is the actual moving head. Okay, now when I merge these together, they sh now you see they're merged, they're one part. So we don't need to connect them. They're one part as it is. Okay, so now all this is going to have to be, um, what we're going to do here is I'm going to go like this. And then I'm going to close this because, you know, we need our, our fuel um, from inside of our tank not to, uh, 
you know, not to leak into that area. So actually, I'm going to go down like this. There we go. All right, so that kind of makes it solid, and now we don't have any issues. Uh, that's going to have issues. Yep, that's going to have issues. So let's undo that, um, and let's go like this instead. All right, so now, as you can see, those should uh, freely be able to slide up and down. And so what we're going to do is I'm going to select them here, and I'm see max power, go to zero. If they're zero percent power, they will freely move. So now let's spawn it, and those should slide up, hopefully, and connect. All right, see how they how they slid up and they connected. So as you can see, we're actually doing all right with two blocks. That looks like a block and a half of movement. So we have a little bit more than we need. Um, let me see. Actually, let's uh, let's let's move that up one then. Um, I want to, you know, I I don't want you know, what, what we're going to have is when we have really heavy seas, I don't want those uh, sliding up and down more than they need to because it might have them undulate up and down. So I'm actually, if we only need about a block and a half of movement, I'm going to uh, keep them to two. So let's do that. All right. All right. So now let's uh, retest this here. Okay. All right. So now that is connected there. Let me don't need that. Let me do that. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and spawn that again and see if that does it. So again, we shouldn't have two immovable items. We should have one movable item. Okay, so see how it's dancing? All right, so it's having issues. That's not enough space. Okay, that's when you're going to start getting glitching. So let me see what's up with that. So I guess we did need three because it's actually it's hitting this um, ceiling up here. So let's go ahead and let's revert that back to the way I had it. All right, so easy enough solution, easy enough. Um, worked the first time, probably should have left it, but, you know, tested it, and it didn't work. So let's uh, go like this. So as you see, these will free move. Um, they don't need power. They move freely. And so let me uh, delete that block there. I want them this yellow color here, so let me uh, just so that they are the same color. Okay, and then I'm going to merge these. So that, those, again, will slide up and down. And then I'm going to take, I'm just do white block here again. All right, and let's go like that. And then this should be able to go across like that. There we go. And so let's test it again. This should work. And it. you notice how I was trying to drag the wheel into the floor. That's when you're going to get into physics problems. Now, as you see how it's not doing that, now we know we're good. So as you see, these come up and down like that, and that's going to grab it now. So before where we could actually have it, it would tip back, it can't do that now. These can't go backwards. And then if we go inside and we press the detached coupling, as you can see, they drop down flush with the floor. Now, in 30 seconds, this should allow the uh, coupling to come back, and those should sh probably shoot up and grab it. So... It's going to take 30 seconds, but as you can see, we're rolling in the seas, and it's actually still done a pretty good job of staying put. So, brakes are on. It's just the wheels get tend to be slippery in uh, storm marks. So, we're having to wait out this 30 seconds, but uh, we should hear that snap. So, what I want to do uh, next is I want to work in this seat. All right. After the reset, the auto reset. That allows us to press the button, fly away. And then when we come back, we don't have to try to remember to uh, select the button again. We just come in and land. It will reattach automatically. All right, so as you can see, those slide up and down freely. That's good. So the next thing I want to work on is I want to make this cross, um, this bullseye here, a little bit more um, detailed so it makes it easier for us to actually um, land. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm just going to drag that there. We're missing a block there. It wasn't as... Uh, wasn't as long as in the front, so now I just want them, you know, symmetrical, essentially. All right, so I'm actually going to replace all of this. Um, so uh, it's fine, you know, that I have the way that I have it, but I just, by keeping it this way, I can then um, use it as a reference point. So let's go paint. And now I want to do a paintable indicator. And so this is going to allow me to, um, is that one, two, three, six, seven, eight, eight? Okay. Uh, this is going to allow me to. Um, this is going to allow me to light it up so that we can more easily see it. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then what do I have? One, two, three, doubles on this side. 
Okay, so that's what the um, current one looks like. I'm actually going to um, fill it in like this probably. Oh. All right, so I'm making it bigger, uh, making it easier. The more markings it has, the easier it's going to be for us to um, actually use it and see it and um, come in for a landing successfully. All right, so that's all set up there. Um, let's go ahead and start painting this. And so I'm actually going to paint one side, and then I'll copy the other side. So let's start with the middle. The middle, we're actually going to use the whole thing. So I'm going to use color swap here, and I'm just going to do the deck color in here. Um, and just go through, and I'm going to start with this. I'm going to essentially do this whole left side. Um, all right, so there we go, and then I'll. Uh, all right, and I'm going I'm to duplicate this a lot just so that I don't have to do it a thousand times, but. Um, all right, so let's go uh, in the middle here. Let's start painting. So we want to um, paint that bright yellow color is going to make it a lot easier to see. Um, this here is the very center. All right, so what did I do? I did, yeah, I did what it was about. I'm trying to count the blocks here. One, two, three, five. Okay, so five wide. So that's three. That's five. Okay, so that's five, and then what did I go up? It doesn't have to be perfect, but um, it's three tall. Okay, so that's the center. What did I do three tall is the question. Um, and I'll kind of make it, you know, if I need to make it a little different, I'll make it a little different here. Okay, so that's going to be our center point. And then we want to drag some lines here um, left and right. So I'm actually going to, uh, I'm going to manually make it symmetrical. So I'm just going to do one side here. Um, and then the, you know, that will make it just quicker and easier for me to copy it. Oh. All right, so this is just going to, this is going to light up when we get close. So when I use the distance sensor, and when the distance sensor, you know, um, essentially I'm going to say if, if it's less than 100 meters, um, you know, uh, go ahead and turn on the lights, essentially. Okay, so that's good there. And then I want to, let me see, um, I think I'm going to go like that. Okay, so I'm going to start my diagonal bits here. that I think goes there maybe just trying to eyeball it how I want it so it's just gonna give it so as we see the rings it's gonna just kind of tell us hey you gotta get closer hey you're you know you're too far away whatever um, and this one will go all the way up there like that this one here is gonna have to be inside so that and then let's cut across here okay so let me see how this looks and then I'll make that a little bit wider there all right so that's looking pretty good it's given us some rings so that we can kind of tell um, as we're getting closer and further away um, from where we need to be so that's why I'm kind of doing it this way is it you know, it gives us little markings to say, hey, you need to get closer. Hey, you're, you know, you're too far away. All right, so this is just going to make it so that we can more easily see it um, as we get up close. So I think I'm going to thicken that up as well there. There we go. All right, so that's pretty good. Um, all right, so that can be uh, made symmetrical here. So let's go ahead and grab this. Instead of repainting it, let's copy that. Let's hit U to swap it. Stick it there. All right, let's see how that looks. 
All right, that's pretty good. And I just need to finish connecting those there. There we go. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And then I can take this whole section here and shift it across there. I'm gonna uh, go ahead up one. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And then this can come down and that will be there. All right, let's look how I like that. So that looks pretty good. You can tell if you get towards these sections, you need to come in. You can see we're starting to get closer. You know, so that's that's uh, just a nice little uh, marking so that we can see where we're headed. Um, let's go ahead and do, just need to do a little bit of paint and left here. There. Yep, and there. Okay. And just see if I have any paint errors before I put it in. I can always edit it later if I do, but it's nice to kind of nip some of it in the bud now if we can. Okay, so that's good. So next thing we want to do is, since this is a paintable indicator, we want to go to additive mode, and I want to go to yellow, and I want to start painting these. So this is going to allow, when the lights are on, that it's going to be this big glowing yellow color and make it nice and easy to see. Um, do I like that color? Yeah, it's a little bit bright. Might go. Yeah, I'm gonna go darker with this like orange. Let me even try this color. Um, I don't want it overly bright. This was actually best, I think. Let me try this color. Just trying to go a little bit darker here. Trying to see where we're at color-wise. Yeah, this is the color I like here. So I probably, you know, I'm gonna end up, you know, uh, doing symmetry again on it just because I don't have. To, Unless this doesn't take too long to paint. We'll see if it takes, if I can trace this quickly without having it take too long. If I think I can do it faster than swapping it I'm, or uh, merging it and everything, I'll do it this way. All right, and so let's go ahead. And so I'm also going to, so this will allow me to do a test at night to see, is this bright enough for me to see it at night and align myself properly with the, um, with the bullseye. All right, because we want to be able to use this in pretty much all weather conditions, and we want to be able to uh, store the um, Katie did on this barge at our base, because we don't really have a way to spawn it without spawning it on a barge. So that kind of gives us a mobile spawn point to uh, spawn it. Okay, so I think I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do half of it, and then I will um, grab this this other. Let me see, I'm doing the bottom here. Let me do this bottom section here, and then that will be. I'm just going to actually. Uh, I will just uh, copy it and put it in there. Save me a bunch of time. So let's grab this section here. That's all painted. It is okay. Copy. We'll press U to swap it. That will go there. That will go up here to the top. I think this was all done up here, but I'll swap it out anyways just to make sure. Okay, let's see how we're looking now. Okay, it's looking good. Uh, the whole bottom is done, so what I'm going to do is swap out the bottom and just replace it with the top. Another block there. I did not. Okay, that's there to there to there. Okay, uh, copy that. Let's go to the top. Hopefully that's done. Okay, let's look at it. 
So that looks pretty good. That uh, looks all set. So that has all the color we want. Um, and then I'm going to move this and I'll replace the entire section here with uh, what we had before. All right, so uh, this will allow us to now uh, color it or uh, have it light up at night so that we can more easily see it. It'll light up during the day as well. But um, All right, so right here, as you can see, we're going to be underneath the, um, the craft. So what I'll do is right, um, I think I'll do right here. And I'm going to put a distance sensor here. Okay, so distance sensor, I'll just make it white. All right, good. And then I'll paint it. We're on additives, so let's change it to that. There we go. All right, and then I need a small microcontroller. All right. And I'm just going to stick it here. Oh, I don't want to. There we go. All right, so this is going to be the... Um, it's going to be the uh, alignment bullseye. All right. Okay, alignment bullseye. I want it um, two. I want to take in a number, dist, and then I want to take in a or output a on signal. That's uh, indicators. Indicators. Okay, good. So let's go in here, and so um, so if the distance is less than a hundred, we'll say turn on the light. So that's if if the helicopter is over it, it's going to automatically start to um, it will start to turn on the lights, so that uh, as we go over it, lights come on. So lights aren't constantly on. We don't have to try to figure some crazy way to signal it or leave them on the entire time we're away. So that will read from there. That will read out to all of these, which is kind of annoying that they are all, um, we have to connect all of them, but you can't daisy chain them out, but whatever. And then I'm going to end up having to add some solar just to keep a battery topped off. This I don't think uses that much electricity. And, um, I'll have to have some system where I can manually shut it off because it would always stay on as it's sitting there. Actually, you know what I'll do? This is what we'll do. Um, we'll add a, another node so if the connector is on, so if it's essentially if it's connected, um, it shuts them off. So it's on off input uh, connectors. Okay, so now what we'll do is um, if it's less than that, and not connected. And not connected, that will um, that will turn the lights. So once it connects, it will automatically shut the lights off. Okay, that's good. So let's go ahead and go logic, and then this will just go to one of these connectors. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's um, spawn that in. And then it should be on to start with the uh, bullseye. I think I need to turn on infinite electricity. I do. Okay, are you not on? That's the question. Okay, it's connected. That's why. So let's uh, disconnect it. And let's see. Okay, bullseye did come on. You can see. You can see a real bright bullseye there. Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and let's... Um, I'm going to go to night. I'm going to start firing up. It'll probably reconnect by the time I get this started. And then I want to turn on my backlight there. Okay, good. And I want to power up and get off before the um, before we either reconnect or the... Um, so see it's going, it's flashing. That's because we're not over it anymore. Uh, what's the altitude? Let's go to 40 feet here. Oh, uh, it's my current heading. Let's go 90 on the on the heading here. Just gonna kind of hold this in position. We can actually probably even maybe do station keeping at some point to test with that. I'm just gonna get us going this way. I need to jump in the back and fix the um, bring up the uh, bring that. Up. This one's not behaving itself because. Um, the new patch, something screwed up, so um, uh, you need to 
drop it and reconnect it on the ground. I'm not going to bother right now. I, I need to try not to fall down this hole or hit this mountain. So I have a couple jobs here. Don't fall in the hole, don't hit the mountain. Okay, so let's go reconnect now. So um, we're going to use the camera, and now we can uh, we can much more easily see the um, bullseye. Let me shut off that winch. The winches don't automatically shut off now. Uh, again, issue with the with the latest um, patch. So I would say be patient, and uh, if you expect them to listen and fix it, you need to put in a bug report in the appropriate channel and not just put in some random form or some random update post and expect. Okay, so see the it's coming on as the distance sensor detects us. It's coming on. You can't use a um, player sensor because if we're inside, it's not going to detect us. So we're inside the helicopter. It's not going to detect us. Okay, so see it comes on. That should be in the very center of our screen. I might actually put a uh, kind of a, some markings on the screen. And I'm actually going to... Okay, so I'm just... Oh, it's I have uh, altitude. Hold on. Let's go to zero on this. Um, I have to be careful. Yep, yep. It's going to try to crash me. I had a bunch of down trim in, and then the altitude hold was holding us. All right, so I'm going to set some down trim here. All right, so I'm going to manually fly this down. So I have heading hold on. I'm just manually operating our um, everything else. I'm just kind of doing some uh, some collective trim there just to keep us um, kind of centered. You know, essentially not climbing, not descending. Let me control that, essentially. So I want to put that bullseye right in the center. So as you can see, it's in the back. Um, I, that means I need to come backwards. So I'm just going to slide back. I'm going to slide over. And it's a little hokey that it wants to, you know, go on, go off. But, um, you know. But now that it, we're over it, it should stay on. I'm going to back it up. We're too close. There we go, as you can see. I, now, with all these markings, I can really easily tell, okay, I need to come right, you know. I can tell by the different markings where I need to come more easily. There we go. So that should be right in the center of the screen. We're close. We're very close. Okay, we need to come down. As I come down, you know, the accuracy gets a little bit better. There we go. We're, we should be really close now. Okay, let's hopefully those reconnect with us little bit to the uh, side here so it's a little bit it needs a little bit more accuracy than the other system that we had on there there we go but as you can see it works it just takes a little bit more accuracy uh, we're gonna go ahead and shut that off we'll go ahead and shut the engine down shut the power down cockpit door all right and so that's great um, you know it took a little bit more accuracy we have to really be accurate because before the system would allow for uh, forward and back motion because of those pivots. No longer can we uh, move, it, these can't move forward and backwards. So there's a benefit and a drawback to that. The benefit is the only direction these can go is w up one block. So if we had really rough seas, we might be able to go up a little bit, but we can't go side to side, we can't yaw, and we can't go forward and back. So that's really uh, good. So let's, all right, so that's awesome. So that's kind of got us where we need to be. Uh, this is working really well. This is working how I want it. So let's pull this in the workbench, and I want to do a mission. Um, that's kind of what precipitated this was. Um, what precipitated this was me wanting to do that mission, but really didn't have a great way to uh, store this boat, this uh, helicopter, and I wanted to be able to store it. So let's go right. Um, that can't put it there. Um, hmm. Are these solid blocks in here? They're not. Okay, I can go like this though. Um, should be able to go like that. Should be able to go like that. There we go. Okay, so that seals and uh, that puts the microcontroller in there. So that's all set. Um, the only thing we need left is I need to plumb in electricity. And then this can go to the um, our career save. So I'm just going to daisy chain up with the electricity, which mercifully I can daisy chain the electricity. So. All right, so until they fix the winches, I'll show you kind of what I have to do to get the winches to behave properly. It's not a big deal so far that I've noticed. So we're going we're gonna to use the winch on this um, mission, so if there are any more issues with it. Um, so is, is there a battery? No, it's it has a 
external um, power. So I will add a battery and just a small solar system. What is this? That is, okay, that's the ring for, that's the, um, the rescue ring. So these don't need power because they just slide. Um, I will power these connectors though. So that goes there. Um, let's go ahead and let's try to hook up a solar system. Oh, where do I want it? Where do I want it? Trying to think. Maybe just here in the center, I think. Um, yeah, maybe right here in the center. Doesn't need to be huge. Um, this adds a lot of cost, though, I think. What is, let me see what solar panels cost. Spell it right would be even better. Um, yeah, I don't know what that's going to cost, but um, they tend to be pretty expensive, I think, and they tend not to um, offer that much power, so I'm not going to do a ton of them. I just need to keep a battery topped off. The battery's not doing a ton, so it doesn't need, um, doesn't really need a ton of electricity. Um, and then let's just hook these here. And then these can go right to this light plug. This light plug already plugs everything in. And then what I'll do is, um, is this a little battery? That's a little battery. Okay, so we have a tiny little battery to uh, keep us topped off. So that's good. So we're all set. Um, that should function properly. Um, did I connect this to anything? I did not. So this hair has to go, and I'll just put it right to that cord there. All right, so this should function in the in the world. So let's me save this here. I need to split the K to it off of this again, which is kind of obnoxious, but um, you know it is whatever. It's just it's how I set it up. So um, that was my issue. So it's saved now. Let me double check and save it again. And let's go ahead and I will load in the um, the career uh, build series save. And that way we can actually go out and we'll do this mission. There's, it's a transponder mission. I've been looking forward to doing a transponder mission. So uh, this will be nice to go out and do that. All right, so here we are. Um, there's our Cape House. Um, we should have, let me check, make sure the mission's up before I spawn it. Yep, it's right here. Um, Red Bush Plain, emergency locator. Could, it's most likely on the land. Um, let's go ahead and let's spawn this. All right, so that's spawned. Yeah, I forgot I had a battery on there for the uh, doors. The doors would not... Okay, I, I see I colored my inside railing white when I did the interior, so I need to fix that. Just a coloring issue. So these should these doors should go in now. Um, they were going out before, and then I have some painting I have to do um, on there. Okay, so to fix this uh, cable, detach it, reattach it. That one needs to be reattached for some reason. Uh, this one usually doesn't. So see how good we're rocking, how much we're rocking and rolling, seeing it's going up now? Okay. So uh, now before, when these went all the way up, they would stop. Um, they have some stretch in them, I think, now. So you have to manually click it off. I want to move that because I have to look through this to do it, and it does uh, a pain. And then that, where that door is, I often have to try to get around that. I'm going to put that up top or somewhere. Okay, so this is nice. This is awesome. Let's go out and let's take a look at it. Um, the benefit, again, of this is if we watch it rock and roll here, the um, if we watch it rock and roll here, it can't go forward and backwards. It can't go side to side. It can't yaw. It can only go up and down by about half a block. And so that keeps us very stable on there. And we're also near the center of gravity. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started here. So let's turn on the engine start-stop. Let's turn on the master power. Um, it's currently showing us at 22 knots, and that's because it's um, it's the uh, wind speed on the tail that, that reads that. All right, so I want to start to increase my thrust. All right, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put on my AP Master. I'm going to go ahead and detach the coupling. As you can see, it comes on. And as we get out of range, it's going to shut off. All right, so I'm going to go up. Uh, let me put a waypoint here. Okay, let's go ahead and let's enter that in. As I switch craft, it's often, I have to often uh, deal with 
trying to remember where everything is. It's 200 feet in the altitude hold. Let's start adding in some uh, prop. So I can see props coming in. I'm doing it with the three key. And here we go. All right. Uh, okay, make sure that's behaving. Okay, it's behaving itself. It's just um, the, uh, you know, as we sped up, it's it's using the tail fin to control us, so it's just a little bit different. Okay, so we're doing a good 130 knots. I can actually speed this prop up. I'm at 100% prop pitch, and I really haven't lost any RPM. Um, we don't get any real fuel savings going up to 100. One of the benefits is if you kind of up gear your prop more, Usually, for me, a lot of the times I like to set it where about 30% of the prop is our max speed. And um, that way, when you go to 100%, it puts more load in the engine, slows the engine down, you get some fuel savings. So you can do 30 if you want to go max speed, and then if you go up around 100, it slows the engine down, and you get uh, a lot more fuel savings. The issue is it slows our rotor down, so I have to be careful with that. So I could probably use a little bit, but not a ton of um, extra gearing. All right, so let's go ahead and turn our transponder locator on. I'm going to test it. So you can see when I turn mine on, it beeps. Um, that tells me it's working. So I can test it with ours. So it's on now. The system is working. Um, we're just probably way too far away to get a beep yet. Um, so you see now the needle on the ADF points right to the waypoint, which is where we want it to. Time of waypoint is going to be uh, five, about five and a half minutes. Uh, it's 12 nautical miles, and it's... Um, Time to waypoint. Time to wait. Why do I have two time to waypoints? That's interesting. Okay, so we're starting to find it now. Time to waypoint. Why do I have two time to waypoints? That's interesting. I have uh, an extra time to waypoint. I think this ADF directional was supposed to be up here, and then that was this one was supposed to be over here. So I'll have to move those two. But I don't know why I have two time to waypoints. It should be time to waypoint. That's nautical miles. What was the other one? I can't remember. I have to look. Alright, so we're starting to get uh, very rare beeps. We're currently um, four nautical miles away. So we, we came from here and we're four nautical miles from here. So we're moving nice and fast. Coming up on the military base here. So we are coming up right here. So uh, we're right about here now. So we've already gone from here to here. We've gone about half the distance in this short period of time. I'm going to go up to 500 feet. Um, a lot of the mountains are about that high. That put a little bit of load in the engine, which not terrible amount, but enough to kind of think about. So. All right, so getting a little bit more of a rapid beep now. And we can test out the new station hold. It's not great, but um, I want to see if I can play with it and get it to work um, in, with roll as well. All right, uh, just under four minutes out. Eight nautical miles. So I said four, I meant eight nautical miles. That was four minutes. We're going uh, better than two miles a minute. 160 would, uh, 120 rather, would be two miles a minute. We're going a little bit better than two miles a minute. There is that fishing boat that always looks like it's on fire. I know that's the green tug. All right, so we're at beam the um, military island right now. So right about here. So draw a straight line from here to here. Military island, we're right here. So I, I, uh, I had us fly higher because you can see the peaks are a little bit higher. So at 200, we could have buzzed them. So I want to make sure that that way I don't have to pay attention too much. Um, i trying to remember what I was going to put on this um, this panel here. Um, I had some thoughts on that. I, I want to work on some Lua. Oh, enunciator panel. That's what I want to do. So I want to do an enunciator panel. Um, essentially low battery, low fuel, uh, high engine temp, low yeah, low battery, low fuel, high engine temp, um, you know, low low rotor, uh, RPS, RPM rather. Um, and so that will light up, say, and it will say fuel, and it will light up yellow if it's, um, if we're, say, say we have, what do we have on here? I think we start with like, I don't know, 90 gallons, something like that. Uh, so, you, you know, if you're down to, say, 
30 gallons, it would start, it would go, come on yellow, and then if you're below, oh, what's that? Something's there. Crashed helicopter? Looks like crashed helicopter. Okay, so we should be getting uh, close here. So we are now two minutes out. We're four nautical miles away. We have to be careful of these. So I'm going to go ahead and go up to um, 1,000. Going to give us a little bit higher vantage point. So we're losing a little bit of RPM, but not a dangerous amount um, where we're starting to lose rotor effectiveness because, you know, we need the rotor like in the uh, Hummingbird. We don't have to worry about that because at this speed, the wing is taking up. Oh, what's that? Okay, that's just the uh, mine. The wing is taking up, uh, um, is creating lift. In this, we need the rotor to spin fast enough to give us all of our lift. Okay, beep still coming. All right, so let's look on the map. We are somewhere around here. We just passed the um, the quarry right there, passing the uh, the mine. I can tell the beep speeding up a little bit. All right, so let me read it really quick. Uh, Red Bush Plane. Okay. So we're kind of coming right in the center of it. Hoping we get a little bit of something I can see it from a distance. But the weather is a little bit iffy. I'm going to go up another 300 feet, so go to 1300. Want to be careful and not, not risk hitting anything. This makes it so that we have to pay attention a little bit more, you know, um, just because it's going to be, we're really going to need binoculars to see it, probably. So this is definitely speeding up. Beep is definitely speeding up. So it's probably on the south side of this line. So we're coming up on this river here. Probably on the south side here, because it's faster than when we're in the north. Definitely speeding up still. There's a tunnel. So it's a big area. We have to watch all the way out to here, which is way over there. Alright. Okay, so we're starting to circle our spot. So we're going to be circling the center of where I just put this. I'm going to actually move us. So, this is alright. I'm going to let it circle. I'm just kind of watching for, um, you know, this kind of orbiting this. So we're doing a fast orbit like this. Um, Actually, let me look for it a little bit. All right, I can't tell if it's speeding up or slowing down as we go on this uh, easterly side. So I'm going to kind of divide it into a quadrant. I'm going to start heading this way. I'm thinking it's on the land. So let's go ahead and enter that in. We'll enter in this new uh, waypoint. And, uh, did I enter in the new waypoint? I think I did. Did it turn into it? What's the heading show? 245. Just being a little slow to get there. Let me... Uh, Take that off. Let me manually control it here. I'm gonna manually fly just a little. Oh, it's it's fighting me a little bit here. That's what it's doing. So. All right, I'm gonna take off the autopilot. I'm gonna hand fly it. I'm hand flying it. I'm uh, definitely speeding up now. Yep. Beeps are speeding up really fast now. Yep, it's over here somewhere. Still speeding up, it sounds like. Still 
still sounds like it's speeding up. Sounds like it's slowing down. I'm thinking it's in the in that mountain behind us. I'm gonna start bringing the um, propeller back. I don't need us blasting around this fast. The faster you go, just like in a car, you need a it's gonna make a wider turn. So slowing down is gonna let me maneuver a little bit better. All right, so that definitely slowed down. We were getting a real good strong signal when we were over the mountains here. All right, so I'm going to um, take off all my holds here. So altitude holds off, that's all off. I'm gonna put back on AP Master. That's just gonna re-add um, the gyro to me here. That's all that's doing is adding the gyro back for me. So smooth a little bit. So I'm gonna start bringing that prop all the way back. I'm just gonna fly it like a helicopter. Getting a good strong signal here, so I want to be able to pay attention to it and not go too fast that I miss it. Getting a good strong signal, as you can see. You may not be able to hear it, but it's one reason I like having the visual indication too. I'm just going to add a little bit of prop in there just to. You know, we have a strong wind. It looks like it's coming, it's a headwind coming off our nose. So adding a little bit of uh, prop will at least cancel that out. Speeding up again, it sounds like. Let's see it yet. Sounding nice and strong over here. No, it's bad to say, but I kind of wish it was on fire so I could find it. I cut across here. Whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, Gyro was trying to kill me there. Gyro is a little bit sensitive. Slowing down, so it's back behind us. Yeah, it sounds like it's speeding up again. Curious if they would put it in the tree in the mountain here or it'd be down tree line. So I'm, it's actually trying to weather vane me into the wind, which is realistic. The helicopter would want to turn into the wind there, the tail away like a weather vane. Maybe it's over here on this side, hoping that I can see it. Really strong, fast signal now. Yep, it's fast now, fast. We're getting close. Look at it going. Yep, still going faster. Where is it? Gotta be close. Still going faster. No, it's just parked at the airport. Okay. It's fast now. See it going? Yep, this is definitely, we're on the right path here. Hopefully should be seeing it sooner. Like it might be slowing a little. Yep, it's slowing down a little bit. So it could be to the left here on the other side of this ridge. 
So it could be on this side of this ridge that we couldn't really see very well. Kind of also going to look in the forest here a little bit as I go by. Sounds like it's speeding up a little bit. At some point I should put a counter on there. Yep, sounds like we're getting stronger this way. Which is good. I really didn't want to go in to the... There it is. Got it. All right, nice. Oh, come on, come on, don't crash, don't crash. Gyro is gonna kill me. Okay, I just zeroed the prop out. There we go. All right, um, let's go ahead and what's our current altitude? 325, let's set this to uh, 300. What's our current heading? Current heading is 115, let's go 120. Okay. All right, let's set a, um, try to see exactly where we are. Um, let me get this right um, to there. Let's go on the map here. Let's zoom in. Right there is where it is. Let's put a waypoint. Let's go ahead and set the um, waypoint in there. Let's go ahead and point to the waypoint. And let's go ahead and turn on station keeping. All right, good. So now let's go ahead and let's start lowering this down. I want to go slow. I want to go 250. Okay, so see, uh, waypoint, we need to move a little bit this way. So it's the waypoint was a little bit uh, behind where we needed it. Theoretically, is it? Where is the, where is it now? Okay, yep, that's right. So, need to come a little bit to the, um, away from the airport. So, more here, I think. So, I'm just manually setting it. There we go. Okay, um, all right, so let's come down again. Let's go down to 200. Just want to be careful. Um, okay, let's uh, keep going down. Let me set this a little bit uh, more this way. I want to get this going to the waypoint a little bit better. Okay, so where is it needs to go more towards this north, maybe? Oh, it needs to go this way more. Um, let's set the waypoint there. Let me see if this brings us closer. I'm kind of playing with trying to get my bearings on where this needs to go. That's better. Okay. A um, little bit more to the north. I think it, was, it must have been close as it was. Just wasn't lining up right away. Okay, let's go ahead and start coming down again. We'll go 150. I'm going to go like 50 feet at a time. I don't want to go down too fast. Okay, let me set it right to where it has it. And then let me put it... Uh, I could land, but I, I want to test out station keeping. So, um, okay, so it's doing well. Let's go down to 100 feet. Because you remember, um, actually, I can tell the distance here. So let's look at this. So we have... Um, this is our, this is our um, sea level. That's our height above sea level is uh, currently 100 feet. Um, that's 77 feet above the ground, so it's 25 foot difference. So I want to go um, essentially 45 feet, so I do 45 plus 25, so it's that 50, 60, 70. Let's go to 70 feet, so that's 30 more feet down. Okay, perfect. So this should be about right. So this should keep us on station. It might move a little bit more than I want to. Like I said, I have to keep working on it. But let's start uh, getting ready and do an actual rescue here. So that's open. That door's open. Let's go ahead and I want to follow my procedure here. So that's dump that in the hole first, which right off the bat it didn't do. Okay, there we go. Then I want to kind of lean down and I want to jump in the harness. Now I'm in the harness, so now let's go down. All right, so now see that way I don't have to go up and down, up and down. So let's take a picture. This is really cool. I'm really enjoying this. This is fun. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying this. This is good. Um, Okay, let's kind of get see if I can get a low level picture here. There we go. All right, nice. All right, so uh, this is going to be cool, I think. Um, no fire to put out. And, uh, you know, if I did my calculation right, which is a pretty simple calculation of um, distance between AGL and uh, MSL. Um, so see how it was station keeping? I need to take out that... Um, that altitude correction, that's why we're getting a little bit further away than I'd like. Hello. Um, let me check it real quick. This will tell me 
I think it's one casualty. One casualty of the hospital. So see, it, even now, it's it's. I could swim to this. It's moving pretty slow. So let's put this person in the harness. Let's put me in the harness. Let's go up. So really nice. I'm enjoying this new craft. Um, Katie did is, is working really well, and it's cool to have the um, the barge that I can um, utilize to do the rescues with, or or uh, launch it with. So that was pretty easy. Um, you know. Uh, Transponder worked well. That was actually the first transponder mission I've used with the system, so that was uh, that worked really well. New methodology to get in and out of the uh, the floor hole, the floor hole, the hatch uh, worked really well. All right, so now that's closed. I can jump out of my seat. I'm gonna quiet that. Put them in their seat. Close that door. Uh, I want to move that, like I said, just because it's hard to see around. I want to move that panel over. All right, so we're good. Um, let's go ahead and let's gain some altitude. So let's go up to uh, 350. Let's do 500. 500 should get us over most of the ridges. Um, let's go ahead and take off station keeping. And now let's go to um, closest hospital is the Mill Hospital. Let's go right to the hospital. Let's go ahead and enter that in. All right, and now that's going to auto turn us. Let's start uh, putting in three. That's going to start adding propeller pitch. Now we'll start getting us going forwards here. And there looks like the refueling plane. All right, we just overshot our altitude. That's why I took that pitch down. Is the pitch just a little bit? Uh, the p value is a little too high. All right, I'm gonna start bringing us down now. We don't need to be this high. Let's go down to 200 feet. It's gonna overshoot, so until I get that p value fixed, I need to be careful and not, um, you know, not like if I made it 50 feet from 500 feet, it could be way too rambunctious and run us into the ocean doing something like that. If it was a, you know only going 100, it's not going to probably dump the nose that much. I'm going to start manually bringing back the prop, and then when I get close, I'll just hit the space bar to zero it, but this just slows us down gradually, and then I'm going to hit it, and that will slow us right down. And then, as you can see, we're going to auto-turn for the uh, where we need to be. All right, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and take that heading hold off, uh, the, um, yeah, the bearing hold off, and now I can manually control Go ahead and start, um, take the altitude hold off. So all I have to do is put a zero in there and now it lets me control it. All right, and uh, I can see that we're gonna land on the grass. I kinda wanna land right on the um, on the asphalt, right on the ramp here. All right. Bring it all the way down. All right, so I'm going to start to reduce the thrust on the uh, engine with the two key brakes. I left the brakes on the whole time, which is fine. Do engine start stop. I'm going to go ahead and I'll uh, leave the AP master on. It's fine. We'll do cockpit door. Go ahead and jump out and uh, we will grab the person. Okay. All right, there we go. And we want to make sure we don't walk into the prop. So Katie did doing a really good job. That was awesome. That really, um, like I said, you know, one of the best ways to test out your systems is in a career game, if something's going to work. And that really, um, you know, is a good testament to, even though the station keeping is not perfect, not where I want it, um, worked really well. Um, transponder locator, um, you know, there are a lot more complicated systems, but that was manual. We had to actually look around, and, and I don't want it too easy. I want it to where we have to do some work. And so that was fun, you know, I had to do a little work, had to um, actually look for the plane. Um, really liked that, that was a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and, um, yeah, see this is just a Stormworks thing, it, it undulating back and forth. I, I increased the grip on the tires so it does it less, so it is actually doing it less. A couple of detailing things on the KD did, but um, it's really working well. And so let's go ahead, um, we're going to end the episode here. Uh, let me go ahead and just shut off the master. One thing I like about how I have this set up is, as you can see, I can reach my master from pretty much anywhere. I can reach it from inside with the door closed. 
I can reach it from the ground here from the seat, so it really makes it um, nice. This needs to be painted, so a couple detailing things in the Katie did, um, and it's going really well. So I think I'll see you in the next one. Um, this was a lot of fun. I enjoyed this. We got the uh, barge set up so that we can do kind of a, you know, a uh, mobile operation if we wanted to, and um, that's awesome. It, you know, it auto connects, so it's going to be really simple and easy to get that uh, hooked up. And uh, it lets us do some great missions. And, um, you know, detailing of this is going really well. I'm really enjoying it. So I'll see you guys in the next one.